Hallo liebe Leute und willkommen zu meinem Kanal. Heute reden wir über die deutsche Fassung von Half-Life und I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna be like that the entire video. Well, I asked you which video you would like to see next and with almost 50% of the votes, the quirks of German Half-Life won out. This is actually the version of the game I grew up playing, having bought it at a flea market when I was a teenager. I still had that CD, but it wouldn't work, so I used the one from Steam. There may be some differences between them, but this was about how I'd remember the game at least. Now, the poll did say I'd be talking about both Half-Life 1 and 2, but I don't think I could do that in a single video, without it getting too long that is. I even tried to include Blue Shift in Opposing Force, but that would have bloated things further. So if you liked the video, let me know if you'd be interested in taking a look at the German versions of the other Half-Life titles as well. Anyway, enough preamble. Let's see how the German version of Half-Life differs from the original. Let's begin with the most obvious change that you're likely going to see, or rather, here, the voice acting. Now, you probably expect me to absolutely trash on it and make fun of how terrible everyone's sounding and oh my god, how did they ever think releasing this was a good idea. But honestly, no. The voice acting isn't even half bad. It's not fantastic or groundbreaking, it's just fine. The original voices weren't that brilliant either, we just grew fond of them over time. And I think the German dub is no different. Almost all the voices fit their characters pretty well. Some are really uninteresting to talk about because of how justified they are. For instance, Gina Cross in the training course. Hallo und willkommen auf dem Black Mesa Gefahrenkurs. Hier werden Sie im Umgang mit dem Schutzanzug für gefährliche Umweltbedingungen ausgebildet. Ich bin Ihre holographische Assistentin. The Nihilist. Noch einer kommt. Was habt ihr getan? Ich bin der Letzte. And the HIV suit. Willkommen beim Schutzsystem HIV Mark IV für den Einsatz unter gefährlichen Umweltbedingungen. Energie jetzt auf 15%. Oh yeah, you had that right. HIV instead of HEV. Even in German, that name is a little problematic. I mean, it sure aids you. One interesting difference to mention is how the tram announcer is voiced by a man this time. Possibly the same actor as Barney. Guten Morgen und willkommen im Black Mesa Transit System. Bitte halten Sie Ihre Arme und Beine stets innerhalb des Zuges. Versuchen Sie nicht, die Türen des Zuges zu öffnen, bevor dieser an einer Haltestelle zum völligen Stillstand gekommen ist. What I like about him is that he really sounds identical to the train announcers here in Germany, with the same fake enthusiasm. I feel right at home. Another change I quite like is how the Black Mesa announcement system doesn't seem to be an AI, but rather just some guy. Some guy with a broomstick up his butt, by the sounds of it. Zugang verweigert. If you've ever read the book Momo by Michael Ende, that is the same person who wrote the never ending story, you're likely familiar with the great gentleman or grey men. There are guys in suits that are the absolute personification of the strict and lifeless German bureaucracy. People with absolutely no humor or personality beyond handing out permit A38. And I always imagined them to speak in this exact same monotone, rather condescending voice. Furthermore, the voice doesn't even change when the military takes over. Which sort of implies that Mr. Broomstick over here is perfectly fine with working for soldiers that are absolutely slaughtering his co-workers. Hey, he's just here to do his job and go home at the end of the day. What else is he supposed to care about? Brings a tear to my German eye. Overall, these voices are really nothing special, since the originals were already uninteresting and the dubs are just fine. The only exception to this, I think, is G-Man, whose voice does not fit in any way whatsoever. Gordon Freeman in voller Glorie. Oder sagen wir besser im Schutzanzug. Ich habe mir die Freiheit genommen, Ihnen Ihre Waffen abzunehmen. Die meisten davon sind ohnehin Regierungseigentum. Was den Anzug anbetrifft, da würde ich sagen, dass Sie sich den redlich verdient haben. He sure sounds like a government worker, just not like an uncaring, otherworldly being that has troubles trying to communicate with you. Actually, knowing our government, those two are really interchangeable. But that is not what you're here for, right? You're here for the funny scientist screaming, STOP! Well, I'm happy to announce that their voices are... also just fine. There's really nothing wrong at all with them. The voice actor they chose fits the character pretty well in my opinion. We have the probe just in the test room. 
Ich habe das Gluonengewehr entwickelt, aber ich bringe es einfach nicht über mich, damit auf lebende Wesen zu schießen. Aber irgendwo soll hier noch ein altes Schienensystem existieren, das nicht mehr in Benutzung ist. Irgendwo hinter dem Silo-Komplex. Warum tragen wir eigentlich alle diese lächerlichen Krawatten? Oh, schön, Sie zu sehen. There are some exceptions, of course, where at most it seems like the actor couldn't come into work that morning, so they just got Werner from the dev team to fill in for him. Die Probe wurde gerade im Testraum abgeliefert. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I think their biggest quality, or downside depending on your view, is how much more natural sounding and less cheesy they are in the German dub. Here's a comparison of one of the most famous lines. My god, what are you doing? It just seems like they are more grounded as characters instead of being over-the-top caricatures. Though they still have their quirks. They are quirks of German Half-Life, if you will. Anybody? Okay. For instance, the scientist being pulled away by the tentacles and blast pit sounds more mildly peeved about being interrupted during his work. Nein. Nein. Nehmt das Ding weg. Nehmt das Ding weg. For some reason, they are in general seemingly allergic to screaming, instead choosing to do some really weird whimpering and moaning. <laughs> well, when they're not just outright using the original voice files. But other times, the noises that they make are downright horrifying. <laughs> that just made me stop dead in my tracks because of how much it freaked me out. Overall, however, I think the German scientist voices are quite fitting. It's a less hammy performance, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Just not one that really stands out much. No, who does stand out, however, is Barney. I'd go so far as to say that I prefer his voice over the original, for various reasons. In my video Blue Shifts Born Brilliance, I talked about how Barney is the everyman, whose life is so uninteresting and meaningless that even his game reflects that. I'd actually recommend watching it after this one, because it sort of adds on to what I'm talking about here. In the video, I mentioned how the German dub captures that bored co-worker vibe perfectly. What I didn't address, however, is how after the resonance cascade, he becomes way more relaxed and casual, turning into your drinking buddy that you hang out with after work. Okay, wir leben vielleicht ein bisschen länger, wenn wir zusammenarbeiten. Da ist er ja endlich. Wir dachten schon, das würde nicht klappen. Alles klar, ab durch die Mitte. Hey, das bringt nichts da oben. Ist alles abgeriegelt. Okay, warum nicht? Wollte sowieso nicht alleine abkratzen. Hey, was zum Teufel machst du hier unten? Verschwinde nach oben. Ich hab gehört, dass Soldaten uns retten kommen. Glaub lieber nicht an Wunder und Hilfe von außen. Und verzieh dich lieber nach oben. Okay, ich warte hier und helfe, wenn noch jemand vorbeikommt. At times, he might be a bit too chipper, considering all the death and chaos everywhere. Hallo. Especially the dying Barney before on a rail, who doesn't even seem bothered by the fact that he's bleeding out. Also, wenn du für Energie sorgst, dann bringt uns der Zug direkt bis zur Oberfläche. Ich würde es ja selbst versuchen, aber es ist verdammt weit bis runter zum Generatorraum und da sind, ähm, Dinger sind da unten. Though, I guess it's justified, because he seems to be a model. I just find it hilarious how he never drops his upbeat and relaxed attitude, even when you're attacking him. Was soll auf deinem Grabstein stehen? Das ist das Ende der Fahnenstange für dich. Vertrage nur so viel, dann ist Schluss. Zwing mich nicht, das zu tun. Das wird dir noch leid tun. Mann, warum muss das nur so weit kommen? He's really just happy to be there for his good old buddy Gordon. Oh yeah, that's another detail the dub adds. All Barneys address the player as Gordon instead of Freeman. Guten Morgen, Gordon. Hey, Gordon. Hey, Gordon. Hey, Gordon. Gordon. Gordon, ich hab auf dich gewartet. I guess it was meant to symbolize how close the two are, but it ultimately kind of implies that either Gordon knows literally every Barney in the facility, or that all Barneys are a hive mind that he managed to befriend. Quite frankly, I don't know which option is more outlandish. Overall, his performance is pretty damn good. It feels like he's seen it all before, like he's just so done with life that this doesn't even faze him. He just keeps a stiff upper lip amidst all the chaos and destruction and tries his best to keep his friends alive. And I honestly feel this attitude really fits Barney's portrayal in Half-Life 2. If anyone can survive both the Resonance Cascade and the Seven Hour War, it's this guy. Stimmt. Unsere Chancen stehen besser, wenn wir uns zusammentun. But my favorite moment came from the dying Barney that got shot by snipers. Hilfe! Hilft mir! Warum hilft mir denn keiner? 
Ich sterbe hier draußen. Hilfe, bitte, Hilfe! What a genuinely heart-wrenching, Oscar-worthy performance. That one was a million times better than the original. Another character, or characters rather, that stand out are the soldiers. Because in German Half-Life, they are replaced with robots. I'll go more into detail about that later, but for now, it means that their voice lines are robotic as well. I wish I could say something meaningful about them, but my problem is that I can barely understand them, both because they're too quiet and because of the robot filter they applied. From what I was able to hear, it's mostly just a bunch of generic robot slang, such as calling Gordon a bio-unit and so on. But this also means that they have absolutely zero presence whatsoever. The HECU soldiers at least had some charm to them, while you've seen these replacements in basically any piece of media that has robots in it. Yawn. A lot of voice lines in the game are too quiet actually, such as the aforementioned HEV suit and announcement system. They also often did account for the different lengths of the dubbed voice lines, which results in them getting cut off too early or characters speaking over each other. Gut, ich gebe zu, dass die Möglichkeit eines Szenarios, in dem sich die Resonanz aufschaukelt, extrem unwahr Ich bin sicher, dass Freeman das alles absolut nicht interessiert. Er ist schließlich ein bestens ausgebildeter Profi. Though I feel, at least in this instance, it kind of adds to the charm. This Barney and Kleiner are like an old married couple. They will not let each other finish their sentences. Ich sage das äußerst ungern, Freeman, aber Sie müssen es unbedingt ja, vernichten. Ja, man wohl lieber umnieten. Natürlich sind Sie uns nicht schuldig, Mr. Freeman, aber Sie haben es doch schon so weit geschafft. Sie wissen genauso viel über diese Kreaturen wie wir oder sonst jemand. Wichtig ist doch nur, dass es nicht mehr viel geben wird, was wir Heimat ja, nennen also, können. Wenn, wir wenn Sie nicht bereit sind, mein Kollege erwartet Sie an der Hauptsteuerung des Portals. Er wird die Tore für Sie öffnen, Mr. Freeman. Bitte beeilen Sie sich. And I have absolutely no clue what causes this, but sometimes scientists will belch out Freeman in this extremely low-pitched voice. Ich will jetzt nicht gestört werden. That's... I don't even know what to say. Let's just move on. Oh man, I need to check the calendar because it feels like it's 1984 up in here. Yes, censorship. Something that German video games have a lot of history with. Aside from the regular removal of all kinds of references to Nazism, which the Wolfenstein series have suffered off for, well, forever, the German government also has a big issue with blood and gore in video games. More specifically, the killing of humans. Because, as we all know, violent games are bad and cause people to be violent. There is no other reasons for that whatsoever, no. What this means for Half-Life is that all blood was entirely removed from the game. Bodies can still be found, but they will look as clean and pristine as when they were still alive. Not only that, but even all alien blood is gone as well. Not even cockroaches leave a single splat behind, which I feel is going a little too far. Interestingly, gore and skeletons still exist, just very rarely and without any blood. The Barney getting sliced in half by the laser in the beginning? Still does. It's just that the laser cauterizes the wound instantly, it seems. Zombies also keep their bloody body horror design. I guess because they couldn't be bothered to come up with a new model, or thought it would ruin the point of them being zombies if they did. But all other gore is replaced with the classic springs and gears, a staple in German censorship. Furthermore, when characters get jibbed, they simply fade out of existence. Which never fails to get a laugh out of me when it happens in mid-air, like it's the ending to an 80s sitcom. Also looks really weird when it happens to snarks, because blowing up is how these guys go out. And since violence against humans is frowned upon in Germany, all scientists and Barneys will simply sit down and shake their head when killed. As if they were so disappointed in their murderer. Which makes sort of sense when it was a player, but less so when it's a zombie or alien. They also still attract enemy fire when doing so and can even react to what's happening around them. Stop. 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 
Das ist das. Tut mir leid, Gordon. Mir wurde ausdrücklich gesagt, dass ich dich ohne Schutzanzug hier nicht durchlassen darf. Do you want to be dead or not? Make up your minds. But for the same reason, all the HECU soldiers got replaced with the same generic robot model, like I mentioned at the start. This is something that has been done numerous times in other games, because it keeps the human at designs while making it clear that it's very much not a human. And I don't know if this was simply a coincidence or because of the version I played, but the robots also seem to be less willing to shoot humans other than the player. At least the first one immediately attacked me instead of the scientist running towards him, which entirely ruins the point of that whole scene. It's funny because, despite both those changes, they still absolutely commit war crimes. So it's not okay for humans to kill other humans, but it's perfectly acceptable for the US military to send out robots to kill humans. Makes a whole lot of sense. I also find it weird how zombies will still eat dead robots and even barnacles swallow them whole. Though I guess it does explain why they spit out all the skills and other metal parts. Interesting, however, is how the Black Ops Assassins didn't get any model change whatsoever. I suppose it's because you can't see their face, so you could argue they're robots or androids underneath their masks. And since they never speak, you can't really prove that they're human either. But what genuinely surprised me is that they're never actually shown harming any humans aside from the player. The Barney that is meant to give you a message before being shot in the back by them is already on the verge of dying and succumbs to his wounds before he can finish a sentence. It keeps the overall idea of something being wrong without openly showing what it is. Also, what a lad! He's mortally wounded but is still willing to wait for Gordon, just to deliver one final message. Just bravo. Take notes, mister, I drew the short straw. Now, usually the censorship would just be a quirky, if mildly annoying circumstance that you can easily ignore. However, the problem is that the lack of blood actually affects the game itself, and negatively so. Unlike in games like Doom, enemies in Half-Life don't really flinch when being hit by an attack. So the only way for the player to know if they're even dealing any damage to them is by seeing whether they bleed or not. And since that's simply impossible in the German version, attacks have absolutely zero feedback. I never had any idea if I was actually hurting my enemies when I played the game for the first time, which is negligible for smaller enemies, but really bad for bigger, tankier ones with lots of health. In fact, I never even beat the Nylanth on my first playthrough. It's already rather obscure how to defeat him, but even worse when you don't know if your shots make any difference whatsoever. It got so bad that I just stopped playing and looked up the ending on YouTube. So what began originally as a quirky side effect of German censorship, eventually turned the game into a frustrating mess that didn't function well. I'm used to not seeing gore in games, but I'm not used to games ceasing to function properly when the gore is removed. So what's my stance on the German version of Half-Life? Honestly, I think I'm pretty neutral. It's not outright terrible like other games, but it's obviously not a complete improvement either. It's just okay. All things considered, the voice acting holds up remarkably well. It's not as iconic or cheesy as the English original, but I think there are aspects where it outright excels. Yeah, a lot of voice lines are too quiet and the robots are barely understandable either way, but the voices of the scientists and especially Barney more than make up for it. Basically, my perfect version of Half-Life would have German Barneys and English scientists. But where the game falls completely flat on its face is in the censorship. It's interesting that robots replace the human soldiers, but only conceptually. I don't personally have a problem with it never being addressed in the game whatsoever, because Half-Life already takes place in a more technologically advanced world than ours. However, it also doesn't add anything to the story at all. In fact, it just brings up even more questions, such as why zombies and barnacles still eat them. Or why they have to set up radios and maps everywhere, when all that could be done using their eternal computers. They're also non-canon, even to the German version, since Opposing Force does feature human soldiers again. Furthermore, the absence of blood really does harm the gameplay a lot. The gore I can ignore, but I can't ignore the lack of feedback from weapons. Censorship is bad, but if you have to do it, at least be smart about it and lean into it. Instead of outright removing all blood, they could have just turned it black and claimed it was oil. And maybe not remove alien blood, because that just makes no sense to do anyway. Really, the only good thing to come out of this is how humans will sit down and shake their head at you. That's just so insanely stupid that it loops around to being good again. All in all though, it could have been a lot, lot worse. Looking at you, Half-Life 2. Muss noch einige Leute verprügeln. Oh yeah, like I said in the beginning, I might make videos about the other German Half-Life games. So if you're interested in that, please leave a comment to let me know.
Other than that, what's your opinion on this version? Did anything surprise you or stand out for you in any way? Maybe there's even something you prefer over the original? Do let me know as well, because I'd love to hear. And please tell me any horror stories you might have of censorship in games gone wrong. And we're talking about real censorship here, not They made the skirt 0.5 cm longer in the US! This is just like communist Russia! But now, this video is over. Take it away, German Barney! Bis später!